Well, good morning. How are y'all? Welcome to Sunday School Highlights. It is a pleasure to be here this morning. I was so upset I couldn't be here last week, but we had no internet. Well, I had one bar and it would not upload a video. Last week's lesson was a good lesson. I'm going to just briefly go over it. It was walking with the Spirit. And here's the scriptures in case you want to go back and catch up on those scriptures. It was Galatians 5, 16 through 25. And um, it's talking here about walking with the Spirit and being uh, with the Spirit in all things that we do. Thinking of the fact that He is there with us, knowing that He is there with us. Uh, so that this is our Spirit series. That's what we're talking about in all these it says, uh, Galatians five sixteen through 18, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill, fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. And that is sort of what the whole lesson was about, is the internal conflict that we often have between our flesh and the Spirit, and how we have to keep in mind that the Spirit is who we are walking with. Uh, <clears throat> it's not an easy battle to win, but it is winnable through the Spirit. So that was the whole, that's not all the scripture reading, but that's the gist of what it was about. So you all can go back and read the rest of those. I'll tell you again, Galatians, Galatians 5, chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. Today we're moving over to United uh, through the Spirit. And um, it says, what is the glue that holds your family or the circle of friends together. What is that glue in your life? What is that special person or that special thing that you all hold sacred and you stay together in spite of all? It says the Holy Spirit brings us together as one church. Now today's lesson is about the church. And you know, if you think about it for just a moment, all the families and all the people and all the opinions and all the things that are involved in a church family it has to be driven by the Spirit to keep everyone together, to keep everyone at peace, and to keep everyone in one frame of mind. Um, it says, Christians are a diverse group of people, even within a particular denomination. And boy, are we ever. Our scripture reading today is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 14. It says, we are different in culture, age, social, economic status, skills, personalities, and sometimes even the properties we hold. The only thing that can bring unity among such people is the movement of God's Spirit. He gives us a common faith and a common mission. Now that's it. We have a common faith and a common mission. And that's what we have to really... Uh, concentrate our efforts on when we're wanting to uh, go our own way or to be separated. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of, of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Um, it seems to me like if you have a group of Christians and they're there for the same purpose, serving the same God in the same house, that you would never have a problem. That there would never be any two-sided conversations of, of his or her opinion or his and his opinion or whatever. But there is because we have the flesh like we talked about last week in that lesson or what we read about um, there's a battle of the flesh and sometimes jealousy sometimes pride there's other things that gets in the way of the uh, spirit given to every man to with uh, to profit with all so he gives us the spirit but we don't always use it correctly right it says the key words is the manifestation of the Spirit. The phrase refers to the demonstration of the Holy Spirit's presence and power in, in a believer through the use of the spiritual gifts. 
Sometimes we lose sight of that. Sometimes we're not walking with the Spirit as we should be. It says, when the Apostle Paul traveled to a new city, he would first go to the synagogue to preach the good news of the Messiah to the Jews who lived there. As Paul told the good news of the Messiah, many responded to the message of Christ by placing their faith in him. It says, um, <clears throat> Paul then carried the gospel to the marketplaces of the city and proclaimed Christ to the Gentiles. Both Jews and Gentiles would form a single church family, but they were far from a homogenous group. They didn't blend well, did they? It says, Paul addressed this, addressed this diversity in the Corinthian church because while diversity is good, the church had become divided into fractions. It says, key word in this passage are diversity of differences. Paul discussed diversities and gifts, differences and administrations and diversities and operations. The Holy Spirit is the one who equips, but he does not give the same gifts to all believers. People will not be drawn to the same kinds of ministries. The Spirit-inspired passion of one person may seem odd or out of step to another, yet it is the same Spirit who works in us. These three areas of differences, gifts, administrations, and operations describe the working of the Holy Spirit, but each caption that works from a different perspective. You know, you may have someone who's filled with the Spirit in a different way than someone else. Someone else may have a quiet spirit where they sit quietly in the pew and they pray. Someone else may have the spirit of song and, and of shouting or uh, maybe they're louder. But does that mean one's wrong and one's right? No, they both have spiritual gifts in different ways. So use your gift to the best of your ability. If God has given you a task, he has given it to you. He did not give it to me. He did not give it to the person sitting next to you. He gave you that task. He may have tasked you with being a prayer warrior. Show up, sit there quietly and pray. That's a wonderful gift. That's the most powerful gift, really. You may be the one who rallies the youth. You may be the one who leads the singing. You may be the one who everyone wants to hear sing. Use those gifts because God has given them to you for a reason. Separate and different, but all led by the Spirit. It says rifts were occurring in the Corinthian church. Therefore, Paul stressed unity in the body. Pride over certain spiritual gifts and one uh, upmanship. We have that, don't we? One upmanship. They did this. I'm going to do that and do it a little better. One upmanship caused tremendous damage to the fellowship. The gifting of the Spirit does not create division. The same Spirit gives all the gifts the same Lord, calls us to use them in ministry, and the same God leads us to action. God is one, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. God is one, and he expects his church to function as one. However, Paul was not calling for uniformity. Now, let's don't get the words mixed up. Uniformity means we are doing the same thing in the same way. No, no, no. That's not what the church is about. It's not about uniformity. It's about coming together and working together for the same cause. Not doing exactly what your neighbors do. And not saying, well, this is just what we do. And, you know, I feel we could do this. Do you. Do your gift that's given to you by God. The Holy Spirit works through people differently. But in our, in our various ways of living in the Spirit, we exhibit a unity of purpose. The purpose is the same, bringing people to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But the gift that you've been given may be completely different. May be completely different. Everybody in the church can't do the same thing. And you should not look at other people and see that uh, uh, they're doing this and I should do that. That's not necessarily the way it works. Maybe it is. Maybe you should follow them, take their lead, and, and go with the group that they're using to their gift with. Maybe that's not what the Lord's leading you to do. Be you. Be you through the Spirit of Jesus. It says, God gives the gifts, the profit with all. No matter how God has gifted you and me, however, we use these gifts in his service for his church and for, his, for the good of all his people. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11. For the one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit to another, faith by the same Spirit to another, the gift of healing by the same Spirit to another, 
the working of miracles to another, prophecy to another, discerning of spirit to another, diverse kinds of tongues to another, the interpretation of tongues. It says, but all these worketh the same, worketh the one and the self same spirit divided to every man as severely as he will. One key truth resounds through these verses. There is one spirit. Paul mentioned a variety of gifts individuals might use in the body of Christ, but regardless of the gift, they all come from the same spirit. Paul listed uh, several gifts, and he said these are all working for the same purpose. But he also said they're all different. The purpose is the same. The gifts are different. Not anyone does ministry in the same way. The idea is <clears throat> the idea is that to minister out of the movement of the Holy Spirit is our own lives. Verse 11 is the key. But all these worketh that one in the self-same spirit. He moves amongst the people of God in a variety of ways to accomplish the common good. Why does the Spirit demonstrate the gift of leadership in one person's life while working through a gift of hosp hospitality in another. The Spirit dis distur distributes his gifts to every, man, um, to every man severely as well he will. The Holy Spirit knows what's best and he does what he sees fit. He knows what's best. He's in control. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized. Whether we, sorry, made me lose my place. Let me start all over. First Corinthians 12, 12 through 14. For as the body of one hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized unto one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink unto one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. The term refers to baptism in the Holy Spirit by which every believer is incorporated into the body of Christ at the moment of salvation. Paul was um, using an analogy to illustrate his point describing the church as Christ's body. He extended this analogy through the rest of the chapter and in so doing he gave us a strong visual picture of the unity of church. Paul wrote that the human body is one and hath many members, hands, feet, eyes, pancreas, lots of parts. All those parts are important to you. Your body can function with only one eye, but the loss creates a new challenge. Even though you can see, can't see your pancreas, you cannot live without it. But you still only have one body. Your body is not a collection of random spare parts. All the parts add up to one body. That's what we are. We're one body in Christ. Our churches, our fellowship, our uh, worship, that's one body of Christ. You never talk about different parts of the body as separate bodies. You always see your body as one. It is the same with the body of Christ. We are one spiritual body in Christ. There are many of us, but we are not disconnected group of random individuals that just happen to be sitting together in the same building. We are are one. The church depends on the differences its its members bring to the church. When I look at the ch my church family, together we are one church. The Holy Spirit is working through the many parts he has assembled as one body. Paul pictured the work of the Spirit to bring people together in two ways. One, by one Spirit are we all baptized, he said. The second was we have been all made to drink unto one spirit. We are immersed in the Holy Spirit and we also filled up with him. We are in him and he is in us. We share the same spirit. One works through us. Unity among different kinds of people seems unrealistic, but the Holy Spirit works in us, binds our hearts to each other, gives us a common purpose and makes us one.
That's a wonderful thought. Here's some things he says, the author says for us to do to live it out throughout the next week. Discover if you, discover if you don't know your spiritual gifts. Take an assessment to help you discover your gifts and ways that can be used in and through your church. Serve. Use the gifts that God has given you to serve his body. Mentor. Encourage other believers who are unsure about their spiritual equip equipping. Offer to walk alongside them and to seek God's purpose for them in the church. Maybe you know someone who's, you know, struggling with maybe working with a youth or maybe teaching a Sunday school class. And they say, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Encourage them. Bring them about and say, let's work on that together. Folks, we are one mind, one body, one church. We are one body. Uh, and we need to act that way. Love on your fellow Christians. And you can take it beyond the church building you worship in this morning. You can take it to the world. Christians as a whole. We are one body in Christ. And we need to work together to bring other people into that body. And to bring other people into knowing what uh, he would have us to do. So find your spirit. Find your gift. Use it as that part of the one body. So we always like to say you pray for us and we will pray for you and uh, you'll have a blessed day and uh, thank you all for joining us. If there's any prayer requests out there, let's please remember them, uh, those spoken and unspoken. And uh, as always, it's a pleasure to be here with you all this morning. Missed you all terribly last week. It seems like we've not been together in a long time, not just a week or two, but it seems like a long time. Uh, we need to communicate one with another. We need to be a part of that one body in Christ. So you all have a wonderful, blessed day, and we hope to see you later. And you all uh, do something that makes you feel blessed today. Bye.